Hey, this is Mark. So, I figured I'd make a video about a uh, Z32 transmission swap into a Z31. Um, a lot of people ask about this because the Z31 NA transmissions are pretty weak, and the T5, you know, does okay, but um, the 30A is a lot stronger. Um, and the Z31 actually did come with a 30A, like the uh, 5-speed 30A, like what's in the Z32, but it, it was only on the 87 to 89 turbo models, so they're pretty hard to find. And usually, if you do find one, they're beat up. So, the Z32 transmission is a lot easier to find. So first off, you're going to need a new flywheel because the like a Z32 flywheel wouldn't work because the Z31 crank is 6 bolt and the Z32 is 8. Um, and you can't just use a Z31 flywheel because the spacing, like how far from the crank the ring gear is for the starter to engage the flywheel, it's different um, because the way the starter mounts to the transmission is different. The Z31 it mounts on the side of the block. The Z32 it actually mounts on the side of the transmission. Like right there you can see the opening there for the starter. So I used a South Bend clutch hybrid flywheel, but I don't think they even make these anymore. But you can get a 1990 Maxima flywheel. You can see this is a Fidanza one that's aluminum. But you don't have to get an aluminum one, but it's an option. <laughs> so get you gotta get a new flywheel. Um get your Z thirty two transmission, NA or twin turbo, but the bell housings are slightly different. Um, the NA1 uses a 240mm flywheel, the twin turbo uses a 250mm, so the clutch is a little bigger. So for speed sensor, because I had a digital dash, I use this speed sensor, the part number is right here. It's out of a um, Nissan hard body, hard body truck. Um, it's cable driven. So you just, you know, take the little cable off your old one, screw it into this one. It's pretty straightforward. Um, the later cars, like the analog dashes, use an electronic speed sensor like this C32 one. Um, and there's a way to get that to work. But I didn't actually go through that. I used this one, so. And this has a black 17 tooth gear on the speedo, uh, speedo sensor. This one's a 20 tooth for a 4.10 diff ratio. This one's for a 3.54. But um, I think you can pull the shaft out of this one and put it in this one and then you can change gears off the end because this gear is actually built into the shaft on this speed sensor. So if you need a different ratio, I have a whole list here. This is what it comes with. And this is the part number for the gear itself. Um, but if you have a different diff ratio than that, you're going to have to, like I said, pull the shaft out of this one, put it in this one, and then you can change the gear off the end. There's just a little clip on the end of here you pull off, and then you can switch gears out. But here's a bunch of them for different ratios. Um, yeah, so the speed sensor isn't too hard to get that working. You can see here I put it in the transmission. You can't use a Z31 speed sensor, by the way, because they're kind of short and stubby. These ones are long. The Z32 uses long, longer speed sensors. And then I just used a little bracket and a washer to basically hold that down. There's a, there's a bracket from the factory that does the same thing, but I mean, this gets the job done. And I, I don't know the part number for that little piece, or if you can even find them anymore, so... Here you can see the upgraded clutch fork. Um, this guy right here, it's a 350Z clutch fork. It's really strong. And then a chromoly pivot ball that goes inside the transmission. So you don't, I mean, sometimes these things break. Um, yeah, you just got to be careful when you get this because, um, at least mine, I thought it came with a three, uh, this is a Z32 throughout bearing sleeve. It's what the uh, throughout bearing rides on and it actually operates the clutch. 
You can see this is the one mine came with. It's a 350Z throughout bearing sleeve, and I thought it was the right one, but really you need to use the Z32 one, or this one's a Z31 throughout bearing sleeve. Either one of these should work. This one's too short, you can see. So the slave, the clutch slave cylinder actually won't be able to operate the clutch. I have a picture of it somewhere. Right here, you can see it extends out too far and it can't actually operate the clutch because the throttle bearing sleeve was too short. So yeah, just be careful with that. Um, this is just me pulling out the old T5 transmission. I made a mess, got fluid everywhere. It's the old clutch and flywheel, and then since I use the Z32 NA transmission, it's um, the bell housing is slightly smaller, so you just have to hit it with a f angle grinder, like a flapper disc, and grind it down a little bit. It's not that big of a deal. And then the flywheel clears, no problem. That's the new flywheel and new Z1 Motorsports clutch installed. Here's me installing the Z32 transmission. So for the transmission mount, I just used a polyurethane mount on a stock cross member, and the holes almost lined up, so not a big deal. I just started, you know, I put the mount in a cro in a uh, vise and started, you know, bending it and hammering it a little bit just to move it out a little bit to get it to line up. It wasn't too bad. You can see there I got all the bolt holes to line up, just had to bend these ends of the transmission mount a little bit. And then I switched out this clutch line here on the stock one. It's a little rubber hose and it also connects to a what they call a clutch dampener. Um, it basically slows the movement of the fluid when you let off your clutch pedal to make it f to make it for a smoother engagement. But I mean, if you know how to drive a stick you don't need it, and um, your clutch pedal will feel better. So I would delete that and put on the stainless steel hose. This is like a 280ZX front brake hose. You can see there, that's where the starter mounts. Um, because it mounts here and it faces back this way, it's going to hit the body here, so you have to hammer that. I just took a little mini sledge and, you know, hammered it. Wasn't too bad, fit no problem after that. You don't have to cut it, by the way. You know, some people cut it out. You don't have to. You can just hit it with a mini sledge. It's really not that bad. It takes like, I don't know, 10 minutes. And then you can see here I had to cut this bracket to fit the starter. Um, this bolts to the side of the VG block and it mounts the transmission. Um, and then I cut up this. This is the stock little you know, transmission cover so, you know, dirt and debris don't get up inside the bell housing. So I just had to, I think I had to cut it a little bit up here to make it fit, but not too bad. And then here, this is kind of ghetto, I extended the um, power wire coming off the battery. Just put a bolt and a nut on this end, on the stock cable, and then extended it a little bit. This is really thick, like, I think this is like 2 gauge or 0 gauge battery cable. Um, and then yeah, I just use the stock starter trigger. So basically when you turn the key, this will tell the starter to turn on. Um, I just use the stock plug and just shove the Z32 starter plug up in there and it fit. Um, now this is where your install might vary. I use the full length bracket so the starter was back farther. Um, you can use this little shortened one. It positions the shifter a little better to the stock location. It's pretty close to the stock location after you use this. But I mean, I'm tall, so I have long legs. <laughs> so my seat's way back. So I wanted um, the shifter moved back a little bit. So I used the full length bracket. Plus it was cheaper. I think this bracket was like 80 bucks. And you can see this one's like 150 so that's up to you if you want to use that. LOJ also sells like the same kind of bracket to move the shifter forward a little bit. Here's my drive shaft. I got that from Shaftmasters. Um, 
from the transmission output seal to the differential was about 35 inches. That's for a two-seater car. If you use a Z32 transmission, yours should be the same. If you have a 2 plus 2, or you know you actually found a Z3130A transmission and you're not using the Z32 transmission, yours might be a little different. Um, there you can see it installed. That's like the issue I said earlier with the uh, throttle bearing sleeve was too short because I used the 350Z1 unknowingly. So make sure you use a Z32 or a Z31 throttle bearing sleeve. There you can see it all installed. And then I had to adjust my clutch pedal a little bit afterwards. You just loosen this nut and then this rod goes into the clutch master cylinder so you just spin that and pull it in or out wherever, you know, you're going to have to check that yourself after you do the install, it's not that big of a deal. Just got to adjust the clutch a little bit. Um, so you can see my shifter moved back a little bit, stock trim didn't fit anymore, so I made this. It wasn't too hard, you just use 16 gauge steel, like a sheet of steel, cut a little hole in it and wrapped it with this like 3M vinyl wrap stuff. Yeah, but that's about it. Here's my list of parts I used. I got a transmission out of a junkyard for 120 bucks. Starter, the drive shaft, clutch fork upgrade, mechanical speed sensor, the shifter bracket to solid mount the shifter because the stock Z31 or Z32 shifter mounts on the body. So you gotta get rid of that. See, one motor sports clutch, good for 550 foot pounds some transmission fluid, the uh, clutch dampener delete, and then an OEM clutch sleeve cylinder. So yeah, not a, not too bad overall. This, If you have some basic tools, it's not a hard install. You can do it. Um, yeah, so that's about it. Just comment in the comments down below if you have any questions, or you can find me on the Facebook groups. Um, yeah, see you guys in the next video.